My dad, Billy Dean Jr., was a colorful character with a wicked sense of humor. I think because he had a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other. He came from a long line of mechanics, railroad builders, and heavy machine operators. There's no question he had a photographic memory. He had an affinity for pushing boundaries and bending the rules. These were exactly the skills they were looking for in 1943 when they created the 517 Combat Paratrooper, 2,500 men who would become the most elite trained troops in the world. So who were these guys from the 517 and how did my dad become part of this team? Well, he certainly wasn't a coward. After all, it took a lot of courage to volunteer to hurl yourself out of an airplane with a sheet tied to your back along with a lot of guns and ammo. Paratrooping was still an unproven science. I researched the 517 PRCT and I found a website. Some of the survivors got together for reunions as they got older and they shared some of their experiences. I also found a book written by Gerald Astor called The Odyssey of the 517, The Battling Buzzards. I contacted Bob Hart, who was in Company D and was living in Seattle, Washington. And I found he was in good health, living with his beautiful wife, Kathleen, and he agreed to an interview with me. I'm in Seattle, Washington, or actually Tacoa, Washington today, getting ready to uh, go in and meet Mr. Bob Hart. He was in Company D, 517, the same company as my dad. I didn't want to just walk in with a camera on, videotaping the first time I met him, so I wanted to do this little video with you guys first. I am going to film it, though. I'm going to go in and meet him and uh, visit with him a minute, and this is my first uh, official interview and my first official meeting uh, a national treasure. We walked all the way down through Nice, a hundred and some miles. Anyway, then we caught the train and was, went north for the R&R. &R. But no, we didn't see any trucks or anything. That we were just that just walking. The CO or whoever it was decided that he says they're going to walk. All we had there two days, and there was a river ran through there. I don't know. Right. I know we went swimming. Whose big idea was it your buddy said to get the paratroopers because you wouldn't have to walk uh, anywhere? <laughs> well, let me tell you, he was sent to an infantry outfit down in California, and uh, and he was going to a machine gun deal, and he got his butt up too high, and they shot him in the rear end with a machine gun. Oh. Okay. So they put him in the hospital. And he married his nurse. And the, the marriage lasted, I think, six months. <laughs> they hated each other. <laughs> <laughs> and he never married again. So wow. here about, uh, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years ago, I happened to go through Golden Gibbon Road, and they lived there. And I saw this lady out in the yard. It was Elmer's mother. I says, is uh, Elmer still alive? Uh, still around? She said, yeah, he lives in Renton. Anyway, and so she gave me his phone number and I called him up and he had never remarried. That one marriage was enough to... <laughs> and, uh, so that's what you get for getting shot in the rear end. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, uh, he says, we'll have to get together for lunch or dinner or something like that. I said, yeah, but he died about three months later. Hmm. I never did see him again. Look at that. It's the it's the French Medal of Honor, really. Yeah, let me, I'll show it to you here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Wow. And Napoleon designed it. Isn't that it? That's... Wow. And, and your dad is eligible for that. That's the France Medal of Honor. Yeah. The highest that they can give a civilian. The highest medal they give. Jeez. We went up. We went up out of uh, Soissons down here. Yes, sir. And we went up and around. Uh, where's no more? Uh, oh, no more. There's right in here anyway. Okay. 
and we went on around up here, and we ended up at Troy Point. Okay. The reason for Troy Point, it was a river there with three bridges. And you all had to take those out, didn't you? They were all gone. Oh. When we got there, see the 82nd Airborne? Yes, sir. We were attached to it under Montgomery. Okay. Anyway, when we got there, they just sent D Company in, which was stupid. They should have sent more of us to take that town. Okay. Two of the bridges had been blown by engineers who had retreated when they first started. Uh -oh. They blew them up. Blew it up and then so now retreated. The Germans are headed for fuel dump there and they, and fuel dumps all here. They were headed for uh, Holland. Anyway, Antwerp. Anyway, so we, they sent D Company in to attack this town and we weren't doing too well because we didn't have enough people and we was getting a lot of people shot and then this German commander, the air, uh, armored commander, had heard that the, somebody said that there was another bridge just north of there right. on this river, whatever it is there, and they could make it. But somebody blew it just before they got there. That stopped them. They didn't have any other way to go. That wow. stopped that part. Of oh, the whole oh, supply thing, yeah. That stone down here right. was stopped at uh, March. Okay. Here. That's yeah. where they were going to cross. That stopped the job. And they ran out of gas. Didn't have a way to supply. All their tanks, the only thing that would work on the tank was the turret. They couldn't move. Wow. So they, you guys didn't know any of this stuff that was there, where you're going or what? You just had to follow. Oh, yeah. wow. But that's, that was where the 517th was, Troy Point. That is so right cool. There. Wow. So that's where your dad got frozen feet. And that's where I got frozen feet. That was it right there. Yeah. So my dad did spend some time in a mental hospital, but not because he was a coward or pretending to be crazy. He had frostbite, and the only beds available for guys like my dad and Mr. Hart, who had frostbite and couldn't march, were in the mental hospitals. <laughs>